Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and welcome back to Logwarts. We are well underneath the Logwarts castle right now, and oh, there are skeletons and things. There are terrors that lurk in these underground tunnels that are waiting to make me into their feasts, but they will not be granted such access to my innards. Where are they? Did they give up? Really, you guys have no attention span. Oh, there you are. And, wait, this guy doesn't even have a bow. Oh, yeah, he does. Anyone behind me? Okay, cool. So, anyway, while we're making the underside of Logwart's Castle safe, I went ahead and I mined out this roof like I talked about, which actually burned almost all the way through my pick. I had to go back to the cattle farm and, uh, like, breed and, uh, cull a lot of cattle. Now, in the process, I also realized that if I knocked out this wall here, I could put in a grand stairwell and uh, have like a secret door. Now, the secret door doesn't actually like open. It's not a redstone secret door. It's just a wall. But I put some signs on this side. Was that a wall or just a door you hadn't opened yet? Nothing is what it seems at Logwarts. So if anybody decides to try and bust open this wall to build something, they're going to find there's something already here, which is exciting. I think that that's a cool addition. Now, for these stairs, I'm kind of tempted to switch it over so it's not all the same type of wood, because this gets kind of bizarre. Like, this is so broad. I don't know. I, I feel like mixing it up with different colors of wood would probably look pretty cool. Maybe cellular automata style, like, you know, bust out some of that Stephen Wolfer Mathematica stuff. But even if I wanted to do that, this column here... Like, I bring the stairs out at a 45-degree angle. I'm actually one column short on this. So I still need to do some digging right there. And I wanted to kind of build an alcove in this back corner here to put the perpetual helix machine in because it's going to look pretty good if it's kind of forward of Sea Cow Bay and off to this side if people are primarily coming in through that entrance up there. So let's go ahead and let's see how I'm going to need to actually come... In a whole nother step here, it looks like. So we're going to just kind of hew through this. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. Thanksgiving is coming up, for those of you in America who know this. Uh, I think um, Canadians already had their Thanksgiving. So sorry if you guys um, already saw this episode, Canadians. But it's okay. We'll make do. So this is going to go down. Let's see. I think that this, logically, I should have this extend to here. Yeah, that works. Great. So, anyway, let's see, where were we? We were apologizing to Canadians because of their Thanksgiving. We were saying, oh yeah, it's American Thanksgiving soon. Hope you guys are looking forward to hanging out with your families and uh, tolerating your families, best case. Bring a board game, bring a movie, you know. Like, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Like, people will get like, oh, this is the one time of the year we all see each other, so let's all argue about the stuff we argued about last year again. You know, sometimes it's nice to have something to just kind of break up everything. Bring a football to toss around, or a baseball, I mean, especially if there's little kids there, you know? Be like, hey, you know, I'm gonna take the kids outside. Nobody's gonna complain if you're the one, if you're taking the kids outside. Like, that's, that's a helpful thing to do, you know? Just kind of break that, like, oh, dang it, of course I went one too far on here. Which I kind of did again here, so that's not too crazy. Okay, so this alcove is a little steeper. But yeah, so I figure if we put Perpetual Helix down in this kind of, like, it's got a 7x7 seven seven footprint, I think. So, much like San Francisco. So, if we put it kind of in an alcove here, it'll be, it'll occupy, like, a lot of this visual space when people come in. It won't block the Sea Cow Bay sign. So that'll be, that'll be a good thing. Um figure might be quicker to teleport up there although that, I don't know how reliable that is about as reliable as I'd expect yep okay good to know so let's see if we're gonna bring this in probably gonna want to knock out some more of this here as well it's a lot easier I've noticed to just kind of come across like so there we are okay so, whoa, Endermite, let's leave him alone. If I probably want to come in across here like this to get, is this a single lip? No, that's actually pretty dense there, or pretty thick. Okay, so I think that this might be a big enough alcove. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. So that's going to be kind of tight, maybe tighter than I would like. So let's pull this out in one more block here. I say one more, but that many. That many more. That's how many more we're doing. Then we'll just kind of start hewing our way down. Let's see. So yeah, Thanksgiving. Bring a book, too. Just be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go take a break and read outside and have a... Oh, you know, I've been really busy. It'd be not, I don't get to relax much, you know. As I say, you're welcome to join me. Come sit outside, you know. Not everything has to be tense. People don't have to be angry all the time. Like, it's... Sometimes when the world is confused, it's easier to be upset and angry about it than it is to be empathetic. And and maybe it's always more difficult to be empathetic than it is to be angry for a lot of people. I don't know. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are not looking forward to the political arguments they're going to have this weekend. But, like, it's just kind of one of those things where, like, you know, you're going to see your family. They presumably did an okay job taking care of you. Some of them didn't, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they did their best. It, it's hard to say. Like, I have so much more perspective on how hard it is to be a parent now that I'm a parent. Like, oh, uh, it's just, I don't know. It's easier to understand your parents the older you get, I've found. But maybe I'm just lucky to have parents that I am capable of understanding, and, and maybe that's not the case for everyone. Family stuff is hard. I probably should talk about something else. Let's see. What am I thankful for on the Hermitcraft server? I am, I'm thankful for all my friends on the Hermitcraft server. It sounds cheesy, but um, I gotta say, one of my favorite questions that uh, was asked at the um, Godiva Gaming panel at Minecon was, what do you like most about each of your friends on this panel? Like, it's a, it was, it, the question came from like maybe a, a six-year-old girl who was just like, who loved these YouTubers, and she loved that they played together and were friends and had fun, and, you know, it, it's, we do like to compete sometimes, you know, we do our UHCs and stuff, and uh, prank wars and whatever, but we do all actually get along really well, and it's really good, it's difficult to cultivate a community like that, you know, because there's always going to be arguments and stuff about different things, like, People are detail-oriented by nature, like, not people on the server, but, like, people in general, and it ends up being one of those things, like, uh, where no matter how slight a disagreement is, it can blow up into something crazy if, if you don't, um, uh, if you don't nip it in the bud, if you don't handle it properly. Like, there's, um, there's some old anecdote, or maybe it's, it wouldn't be a parable, but it's, a uh, some old story about like two people who uh, met on a uh, like on a transatlantic cruise, and uh, one of them is just like, "Oh, uh, you know, I was actually uh, raised Baptist. Oh, really? Uh, so was I. Oh, oh, really? Uh, were you uh, Northern or Southern Baptist? Uh, Southern. Oh, really? Me too. Uh, you know, were you in this region or this region? And, and then they just keep narrowing it down. And then they find out that, like, basically they went to churches across the street from each other. And it's like, oh, yeah, those you guys are a bunch of heretics. No, you're a bunch of heretics. It's like you guys have so much in common, but, but just the one little thing would, uh, would be enough to completely set people off against each other. And so that kind of – I guess that not only is about f server management but also about family. Like, it's, it's one of those things where, like, it's easy – to only see the differences between people. And one of the big keys to our success on Hermitcraft is acknowledging that we are all going to be different. We are all going to have different opinions, but we're going to create an environment where we can be constructive about our uh, about solving uh, and moving forward with things. You know, like um, some people are saying, oh, yeah, um, what is that thing with the... Uh, the mob suffocation rules. It's like, you know, all of us had different opinions about how that would work or how that would make sense, and we talked about it in a rational way over time. People's opinions changed as they learned more information and experimented. Like, it's... Th these are the sorts of skills that you have the opportunity to practice this weekend. If you want to be able to be a good friend to people and be a good team member or partner, like, it doesn't hurt to start practicing with your family at home this weekend, you know? Just uh, 
try to hear people out, accept that they might not be right. Like, just because you're listening to somebody doesn't mean you... Uh, that doesn't have to be taken as a sign of agreement. That's just a sign of respect, you know? You can respect a lot of people and not agree with them on stuff. Let's see. I'm thinking I might even want to go cut in one further here. And, of course, now that I'm looking at this... Probably the best way to do that would be to come up over here, like so. I'm tempted to redo all the walls on this room, too. I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do with it, but it'll be good when it's done. Okay. So let's see. So we want to cut in one deeper on this stairwell here, just to kind of continue the natural flow of the room. Kind of cutting it in. Making sure we illuminate all the little places that we could have mobs spawn in. There we go. Yeah, we're probably gonna start hacking away at this pretty severely. Um, yeah, let's see. But yeah, so I'm thankful I get to play on a server with people who are patient and respectful. And if you want to play on a server with people who are patient and respectful... You need to practice those traits yourself and find other people who have the same traits and get something going, you know? And that's one of the weird things about family. You don't get to pick who you play with. They're just kind of like going to be there, or you know. But at the same time, you know, with family, like, you're just like, oh, yeah, they're always going to be there. But they might not be, you know? There might be an accident or, or something unforeseen medically. And so you never know. It's always... It's always better to try and try and connect to people so that way you'd you know it, stuff is going to happen no matter what you can't prevent random chaotic violence or medical problems or whatever from popping up but you don't want to live if they do occur in a situation where you're like oh you know i wish i hadn't been such a jerk i wish i had been more patient with them i don't know like it's it's Kind of one of those things like, oh, if you if you played the game right, it, it doesn't matter as much if you win or lose, because you know that you did the best you could, and uh, you can take some pride in that. And, except in this case, it would be consolation, but, you know, still, it's a core concept is stands, I think. So, anyway, let's see. I think that I probably need to go ahead and put away a bunch of this clay here and then start on the statue. So, time skip. I figure now that we've gone ahead and got our nook in, uh, kind of installed here, now that we've cran... Uh, speaking at a normal level. Alrighty, well I figure now that we got this nook installed here, we'll go ahead and grab the glowstone that we'll need to actually get the base of the sculpture installed. Now, I figure... We're not going to do the whole sculpture this episode, because it'll take a while. But, like, I figure we want to give it some space here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I probably should have uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I probably should have separated out 49 of these in advance. That would have been good, because then I'd be certain that I wasn't overshooting anything. But with the marvels of silk touch technology, I don't have to be quite as precise as I might have once needed to be. Is this looking about appropriate? Yeah, this is this is looking pretty good. So then that means if I come up here just as I suspected, okay, great, this is actually going to be perfect. Because then when we get our fence posts in, yep, that'll go right there. Now, I don't remember exactly how tall the uh, actual sculpture is. I'm going to have to... Uh, Dang it. Come on. Here we go. I guess in theory, if these are, these wooden posts are, or if you divide this by four, that should give you the height. However, there's 53 of them, which to me seems like an unlikely number. Let's go ahead and grab some clay here. Man, I don't know why the server is so slow right now. Actually, let's use andesite, because andesite looks nothing like anything in any part of this. So, let's see. If we're just going to go around here and put one, two, three, four. 
and we got 48 left. So that means this thing is probably supposed to be... Maybe I have one extra fence post. There might be one extra fence post somewhere inside the sculpture. I think that's what it is. So we'll go ahead and put that one back. That's odd that there's rails in here, too. I don't... Hmm... Maybe that extra fence post has something to do with the transit system when I was moving everything in here. But yeah, we got 49 glowstone left. So that's good. So that means then, if I just come over here and hop up, I can divide this by 2. Yep, and just add another 12. And then we'll hop up there. Perfect. And I figured that probably the simplest thing is just going to be to pop down here again. I'm thankful for Silk Touch, I'll tell you that. And I'm thankful for, what do you call those? Fancy boots. Um, okay, see, this is an undesirable way to do this. Let's go ahead and grab our axe. Okay. Feather Fallen. Oh, one thing you'll notice, I also put a fence over here so that mobs wouldn't spawn while I'm actively working on this. Or, not that they won't spawn. They'll still spawn out there, but they can't. I don't want a creeper to run in here and blow up this uh, helix sculpture. Because it's a fairly complex sculpture. Okay, dang it. That's kind of what I was hoping to avoid. Cases like that, but whatever. We'll switch to another stack here. And come back and do these perfectly. On the, so if I just keep this directly in the middle. Then I shouldn't have the same problem. Oh, boom. There we go. Perfect. So then we'll switch over to... Glowstone. And then we dropped six glowstone. Now we'll hop down directly onto here with our remaining four oak fences. Whoops. Perfect alignment. Great. And one glowstone. Perfect. So then we can just kind of swing on over this way and continue the rest of this. Piece by piece, this is all going to come together. And it's going to look great. It's funny, it just, it, uh, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I kept thinking to myself, oh, it's going to take me so long to dig out that ceiling, it's not going to be worth it if, uh, other people don't want to come help. But, like, you know what? Just coming over here and doing the work, it didn't take that long, and I'm glad to, to be moving along with this. This is one of those things that's been in, on my project list for a while, and I finally get to move forward, so that's exciting. Wow, so yeah, this ceiling was about as... Yeah, I'm really, I would have been probably hitting the uh, top of it if I hadn't wiped out that, those additional layers there. So up we go. And final glowstone. Excellent. Let's go ahead and give this a look from over here. We're not going to put the, uh, all the pieces on the inside quite yet. We'll, we'll save that for another episode. But just to kind of get a sense of kind of the framing of the room before we actually do put all the glass and the signs in. So when you come in here, you're going to see the side of that, and then, hmm, yeah, so that, that's going to look pretty good. Not going to block the sea cow bay at all from that angle. And when you're coming in from down here, it should be pretty good as well. Yep, so that'll be right there when you come in. Then sea cow bay over here. And we're going to have some room for some other pieces over time, too. Can possibly put in another alcove there, or uh, some second-story stuff up here. So this is pretty good. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode once we pick up our little mess. No need to leave andesite lying around. So, thank you guys for joining me today. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. <laughs>